This is a place for planting, for digging, for harvesting, for relaxing. It's a place to get your hands dirty, but most of all, it's about having fun. And that's what you'll always have when you're in the garden with Doug Oster. You want a green thumb too, don't you? We're on the road again today and we're at Phipps Conservatory and Botanical Gardens and it is the perfect place to be with frigid temperatures outside and it's nice and toasty in here. We're going to learn all about houseplants, not only how to take care of them, but how they purify the air. Let's meet A.J. Ewing. He's the outdoor display foreman here at Phipps and we're going to talk to him next. Staghorns, um, the Christmas fern. So the original study was performed by NASA in the early 80s and they took what was then common household plants that you could buy uh, at a nursery or a local garden center, and they created this biohome, which uh, they put plants in it and uh, materials, household materials that have VOCs, these volatile organic compounds that are known neurotoxins, carcinogens. Yeah, they are everywhere. They're in uh, carpet fibers. They're in staining, uh, wood stains, glues for baseboard, floorboards, um, they're in your paints. Uh, anything plastic, I mean, your, your TV, your entertainment center, anything that you're holding, your remote, I mean, all these things are off-gassing at surprising rates. How do the plants purify the air? Uh, essentially through the photosynthetic process of um, taking in carbon dioxide in exchange for sugars, and in that process, um, they're taking in through uh, chemical exchange in the uh, somata under the leaf, and they're helping to um, purify the air and release oxygen. So let's talk about some ones that are easy to grow, that anybody can grow that will purify the air. Yeah, um, mother-in-law's tongue, Sansevieria, the snake plant, very easy to maintain. Yeah, there's uh, the gold edge, there's a gold twist, there's different varieties that can, uh, are, are nice to accessorize in a container that aren't what you traditionally think of as a snake plant. Christmas cactus is an easy one to maintain. Uh, I'm a big fan of the philodendron, Prince of Orange. Uh, I think you can get some really neat textures out of it and color, easy plant to maintain. Well, let's talk about a couple other plants and one that's right behind me here, the flowering maple. Mm -hmm. It needs, um, if it's indoors, I think the sunniest area you can find. Ferns, uh, ferns are easy to maintain. Um, there's uh, all sorts of different varieties, uh, different cultivars. I like staghorn ferns, bird nest ferns. Uh, what's the number one thing that kills houseplants? Overwatering is the number one culprit. Uh, my rule of thumb is when in doubt, let it dry out plants. Plants can always recover from uh, being underwatered. It is very difficult for a plant when overwatered to um, bounce back to vitality. Best method is just a, f a fingertip method, is putting um, one or two fingertips onto above the soil rim and feeling if it's moist. Uh, sometimes it can feel cold and it's not moist. Um, and then if that's the case, actually just lifting the pot and feeling the weight of the pot and that's a pretty good indicator if it's, if it's retaining water or if it needs water. I like to completely flood the container, you know, maybe put it in your sink if you have a mud sink or a wash sink. Just let it rinse uh, and drip out and then put it back on your saucer or back in the uh, spot in your house. So we practice integrated pest management. There's several different methods for which you can control pests. And the primary one is mechanical, which means just physical removal of the plant debris. If it's scale on a leaf, it's removing the leaf. If it's a mealybug, perhaps just a wet cloth and removing the mealybug. So those are very simple, non-chemical ways of dealing with pests. Plants will tell you when there's something wrong. Just looking closely a lot of times at the plant, right? With a magnifying glass? Yeah, just with uh, a simple magnifying glass, um, it's, you, it's, it's pretty easy to begin to uh, distinguish what the problem is, if it's a nutrient deficiency or if it's a, an actual disease. Because with a magnifying glass, you'll see the bug, right? Right, correct. So you've got an office in there that has no VOCs, that's packed with plants. 
What are the other benefits of having all those plants in there? It helps with productivity. It, it helps with well-being. Um, this time of the year, when you look out and it's uh, gray and cold and snowy, and you know you have something living and green and growing next to you, it can help you get through the season. <laughs> For more information about everything we talked about today, including a complete story on house plants and a really cool photo gallery of the different varieties, check me out online. That's also a place where you can see lots of other garden stories and even a picture of the first flower from space. Now, until next week, there's no way I'm going back out there. It's too cold. I'm going to stay in here and poke around. It's my job. <laughs>